Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing with another tech video. So this, today, this one's about how much lift you actually do get from a camshaft. Now, let me explain what's going on and what you're going to see. Because this may shock some of you. What I have here is this is a 350 Chevy engine that's going to be for my sister. And uh, this one has the Assault heads I've ported. Now, even though it says passenger, that head's getting switched over here. It was just easier to get to. This is actually a passenger side head. And I know some of you are saying... The heads can go either way. True, but um, you see these holes that I've drilled here and here? That's because those were drilled through the intake manifold, through the gasket, and that ensures proper or perfect intake port alignment. And this head really belongs on this side. So it will be, but I'm just using it for this demonstration. No big deal. It's got one head bolt holding it in, which will be fine for this. You'll see in just a second. Uh, let me see. What you, so right now, I've got the check springs put in. And I'll use these, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to a regular spring that's supposed to be on it. This one's for the hydraulic roller. They've got 150 pounds on the seat and four, 405 open. And then I'm gonna put a solid roller spring on just to show you some of the differences. And what we're gonna do, in case you're wondering, is we're gonna actually measure how much actual lift happens. Now, true, you can use a cam doctor for this, which is what I used in the previous video. But this one I actually want to use for this because it's the actual lift you'll get. Because in this video, what you're going to see is loss in valve train um, from this pressures. So in case you're wondering what all this is, this is the device I actually use on the flow bench to open up the valves. But I also use it for uh, things like this. For instance, when I'm testing the piston to valve clearance, I'll use it for this with the check spring. Because you can move it down until it touches the piston. You know the exact amount of piston to valve clearance you have without having to use clay now you still have to use clay though to check radio because there's no way this can do that in case you wonder what radio is the pocket might be this width and your valve might be this width and you need a certain distance between those two otherwise just because the guides are have some clearance and valves can flex they can actually hit the sides of the pocket bend the valve and break the valve um that's something that most people don't think about they only think of the downward one but it still can hit side to side um, if you don't have enough clearance. So you still have to use clay for that. So anyway, that's that. So um, here's the one I'm going to be using. Now, this is, the high, this is the camshaft for this engine. I really would like to see this thing make 400 horsepower or more because the heads flow way more than 300 CFM. This is, the heads are over hook for this thing. But they've got, this is an Eagle rotating assembly, really thick 564 rings, and they're in the bore, like the, they're not even zero deck. They're in there by maybe 15 thousands. No, it's 20, I got it written down, 23 thousands. So that ain't helping a thing. And then I got a 39 thousands head gasket, so quench sucks, thick rings. Um, and then I've got this baby camshaft because my sister specifically wanted no lope. And um, of course she wants power brakes and everything like that. She wants calm, nice stuff. But I wanted to make decent power. So if you look at it, the ratio on this is 215. 232. Now, this is the lift it says, 540 and 535. If you ever get any camshaft, whether it be LS, small block Chevy, whatever, whenever they show you those lift numbers, they're calculating those on stock rocker ratio. So they're saying this lobe, 3.6 on the intake. I'm looking at it right. Yep. They'll take 3.6 and the stock rocker ratio for a small block Chevy is 1.5. So they take 3.6 times 1.5 and they give you that number there, 540. Now, if you're running a 1.6 ratio rocker arm, what you have to do is you take 3.6 times 1.6 instead, and we'll get you a different number than this, which brings it up to this. This is the rocker that we're going to use for the test. This is what's going to actually go on the engine. This is the comp, ca comp cams die cast 1.6 ratio um, uh, aluminum rocker. They're not billet, they're die cast, so a little bit cheaper. They're more perfect for what this is with the hydraulic roller stuff. I don't know, I'd use it on a solid roller. I don't know how long they last. They're pretty beefy, though. Anyway, this has a 1.6 ratio, so that lifts actually more than that. Should be around 588, if my math remembers right. Anyway, that's it. Now, in reality, I'm going to be using this lifters, these lifters from Morel. These are the hydraulic rollers, street version of the hydraulic rollers from Morel. And that's what will be going in it. But for this test, I won't be using them because with the hydraulic, um, there's a plunger inside that travels down. I want to take away that um, for this test just to kind of show you. So instead, what's going in there 
is going to be these. And these are um, Morel Ultra Pros solid roller lifters. I'm just using them for this test. I'm not going to use them in the actual engine when it's running because I want to take up any chance of anything moving so I get the actual lift that the can has. So these are going in. And let me show you what we're getting ready to do. I'm going to put them in. I'm going to hook up the whole assembly. So I'm going to put the lifters in, put a fish rod through, put the rocker arm on, set it to zero lash. I'm going to measure how much actual lift we have. Okay, and then we'll put real springs on. Prepare to be amazed. Okay, guys, before I'm getting ready to show you this, I'm measuring this, but I did my math a little wrong to show you. I told you 588 just a second ago, but that's what it is. We're going to go ahead and keep track of everything. So 360 load times 1.5, which is like the cam card said, it should be a 540 lift. I'm using a 1.6 ratio rocker. So if I multiply the load times 1.6, it's actually 576. What we're going to do is we're going to actually measure this and see how much it is. So I'm going to set my GoPro right here. Hopefully you can we'll aim it up here. I'm going to spin the engine over and you can count how many times this goes around. It is zeroed out. There's zero lash. Everything is fine. It's just a checker spring. So here we go. Might take a little bit. Here we go. One, two, Three, four, five. It looks like we're there. So if we do, we have five hundred and this would be eighty five five hundred and eighty seven. So 0.587. In case you're wondering, twenty you have to go backwards because it's spinning this way. So it's at a twenty, which really means eighty, and you can count up. So this is uh We'll call it 587. It's really close to it. So 0 0.587, that was our max lift. So I'm going to write that down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the spring that's supposed to be on it, which is this one. It's a hydraulic roller spring. We're going to remeasure that. So currently it's a 587. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to put a different rocker on because I want to show you something. But anyway, that's 587. Okay, now what I've done is I replaced this rocker that was a comp with this one. Okay, this is a Speedway 1.3 ratio rocker arm. And I know you're thinking, why in the world do you have a 1.3 ratio rocker arm? For those that have never ran flat tappets, and for the longest time, that's what most people ran because they couldn't afford their rollers. Rollers are by far more prevalent now, and because flat tappets seem to go flatter more often. What we would do is we would buy rockers like so, and we would take off our rockers we were going to use, like the 1.6s, and we put these on to use for break-in. And the reason why is because there's less pressure on the springs. Now there's other ways to do it too, like some people remove the inner springs, but a lot of us just have a single spring, so uh, we'd use these. Anyway, I used to have a full set, but they would actually, and I had a full set, and I don't know, spent almost 200 bucks on these from Speedway. Um, and anyway, they cracked here um, on almost every one of them. And the only two that were left that were good are these two, so I used them for mock-up. I call it Speedway, but they never did anything. I feel kind of angry about it because I know these are made by Scorpion and they have a lifetime warranty on all their stuff. Or at least they used to. I don't know if they still do. And I couldn't get another one set sent. And they were only used for break-in, never in racing. I made one dyno pull where I had that comparison between a 1.3 and a 1.9. And they gained like 60 horsepower. These were the rockers that were used. Anyway, the reason why I'm going to use it on this is because we get to see the difference in a rocker because this one's going to kind of shock you. Because you'll see in a second, but Scorpions um, typically um, have a higher lift with them unloaded. And I'll show you. But before we do that, let me show you the math. So here's our math. That was the actual lift we had, 587 with a comp. If I do the Speedways, take the load times 1.3, it should be 468 lift. But let's see what we actually get. All right, back to zero here. Oh, there we go. One, two, three, four, there we go. So um, this one would be 400, and see 70, because I think it's 30, it's 70. Looks like 475 lift. 
So it got way more than the 468. So it's supposed to be 468, this one's 475. All right, now we'll switch over to regular springs. Okay, now I have it set up with the regular spring that's gonna be on it. It's 150 on the seat and like 405 open. And we're gonna measure how much actual lift you have. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, there that's not going any further so we have 500 and remember this is back that's 550 558 we'll call it 558 so write that down here in my paper and you'll see what we have five five eight hopefully you can see the results there boom so if we look before, when we actual it should be 576 with the 1.6. When we measured before, we had 587. When the real spring was put on, now we're at 558. Um, just to kind of show you, it has dropped. And you might say, why did that happen? Well, in my last video, I had to do the whole video was about how I think more lift is better, and people kept arguing. Um, so I'm saying, no, you don't need it. That's you don't need that much lift. You're not even getting the lift you have on their cam card at all. And this is the hydraulic roller setup. I mean, there's more rigid ones, yes, but you're not even getting what they claim on the card. And I'm not even dealing with the sole roller where you have lash taken away. So look, I just lost, this should be 576 anyway. I lost 25 thousandths right now. Now I'm gonna tell you also, I have a saw lifter in here right now. I am fairly certain that when in a live running engine, with these hydraulic rollers some of that pressure in the plunger is going to bleed off and i'm going to lose even more lift there's never going to be a situation in the engine um, where it gains lift except for extreme rpms where it starts lofting it all right but in like normal street driving you're probably not going to see very much loft if any but however you probably will see a loss in lift because of different things such as deflection and the plunger going down. Now, we're gonna do a couple more tests. I'm gonna use the same spring and I'm gonna put back on the um, Speedway one because I sometimes this would be amazing to you. But what happens is some rockers, typically scorpions, they build in more ratio to begin with because they understand that they know there's gonna be a loss of lift from deflection and aluminum twisting a little bit. So what they do, at least in my experience, scorpion does probably the most, is they build in more ratio to start with, so you end up getting more lift. Because so even if you look, the comp kind of did that. It had 587 because they built it in with more ratio, knowing that this thing is going to have um, some deflection in the rocker itself to try to make up for it. Clearly, it wasn't enough to make it match that, though. Okay? Scorpion typically put even more. So that's why we're going to measure that first, and I'll put a solid roller spring on, see how much that loses. Okay, now I've got the Speedway rocker on, the 1.3 ratio. Now before with the check spring, it had 475 lift. Remember, it's supposed to have 468 if you do the math correctly. And by the way, I, I should point this out. I have not put this cam on the cam doctor, but I do believe it's lift to be correct as what it said from there because the other ones I've done from comp, their lobes are pretty close to that. So anyway, um, we did 475 before with the check spring. Let's see what it does with the real spring with this one. One, two, three, four, right there. So we do this one, we had 459 lift. So I write that down real quick. So now if I look at my deal here, I had, uh, should have been 468, check spring was 475. Now I'm down to 479 with the actual, or 459 with the actual spring. So it's still less than what the advertise should have been, okay? 
Now, we're gonna do one more test. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the other one and I'm gonna put on a solid low, uh, lifter spring, uh, sorry, solid roller spring, which will be the Pack 1225. Now I'm gonna be installing at a 1.98 height because that's the tallest we'll go with this setup, which will give me about 265 open pressure and around 605 at this lift. I'll actually measure before I put this in there to give you exact numbers what the spring pressure will be before I check it. And then we'll just do this whole thing over again, okay? Let's get that all set up. Okay, this is the spring information for the pack springs that get ready to be installed that are installed that we're gonna check here with the rocker arms. I wanted to show you on my bucks in here. So the installed height's 1955. Um, really they're supposed to be installed at a two inch. That's what they claim on the box. However, uh, because these valves are shorter, because they're not intended to be installed at a two inch height. In other words, what I'm trying to say is you try to put in the shortest valves that, that you can to work with the installed height that you need. In this case, it's much shorter than what this one would require. Hence, taking out, giving as much clearance as I could, the best I can get is 1955. So at 1955 installed height, this is going to have 286 pounds on the seat. At 576, remember this is our theoretical max lift. We're gonna have 650 open pressure. And that, by the way, gives us 228 to coil bind. Am I running this spring? No, before someone starts commenting because I only heard half of what I said. I'm not running this spring. This is a solid roller spring. I'm only doing this to show you how much you lose in deflection. So let's see what it does. Okay, I got this installed, which by the way, it's a pain. These rockers really don't aren't made to clear a 155, at least not easily. I also think maybe the push rod link's probably a bit wrong for this, which is fine because this is not what I'm going to be running on the live engine, of course. But anyway, um, so it's all set up. I got it zeroed out. And let's see how much lift we lost with this. This is a considerably stiffer spring, which is more common spring butt pressures, by the way, than what you would... This is the most common, probably, spring pressure for a solid roller you'd see, um, usually. Actually, they're, to take that back, usually if you buy most heads, they've got installed height. Um, spring pressure is used around 245, and they open 605. So this is a little bit more, but as close as I can get right here. But anyway, let's go ahead and get it. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, and there, there we go. So what do we have? We have five, and that's 35, 36, 0. 0.536. Writing this down just so you see. So in case you're trackering, here we have it. Check spring five, uh, sorry. Um, what theoretical should have been was 576. Should have been. When I put on the, oh, I did it all, I put it in the wrong spot. And I'll rewrite this for a later video. But um, anyway, it should have been theoretical 576. When we used our check spring, we had 587. When I used the real spring, it was 558. Solid roller spring, 536. I should have put that number there. So I'll scribble this out and put it here. Point is, we lost another 20,000 lift with the solid roller spring. We keep on dropping. All right, let's go ahead and try it on this one real quick. And then I'll talk a little bit about it and we'll talk about different things about it and go from there. So one more to try and then more jabber jabber for me. Okay, now I have the Speedway on. Uh, it's 1.3 ratio. Let's see what it does real quick. One, two, three. Four. Ooh, we're stuck there. Yeah, sorry, going backwards. Four eighteen. And so at four, that's at four eighteen now. All right, so you all witnessed it. I'm gonna uh, write down the numbers, then I'll talk more about them, and you get to see what I'm talking about. There you go. Okay, I've rewritten this so you can see how much is lost, so you have a better idea. So we'll go through it real quick. Um, this was a 360 low. This is the cam card right here, okay? All right, so if we look real quick with the check spring, if you remember, we had 587 lift, okay? Now, the, what it was supposed to be is if I calculate the lobe lift, 360, and I do it times 1.5, it's 540, but this is a 1.6 ratio rocker, which should have been a 576 lift. 
As you can see, it was higher with the check spring because I said before, usually they build in more ratio in the rockers to kind of make up for deflection. However, this was the real spring that was installed. Now I told you the spring pressure, here's exactly what it is. This is the spring pressure that was on there for the hydraulic roller. It's gonna have 152 on the seat, 408 open. That's supposed to be at a 576 lift. It will have 408. So with, with that spring pressure, using the same rock arm, I lost 18 thousandths lift and went to a 558, okay? Now, once I added the solid roller spring, considerably more pressure, which you just saw, it went to a 536, I lost 40 thousandths in lift through deflection. Okay, now let's look at the Speedway one. It's a different brand of rocker. And by the way, the comp one was on a 3 8 rocker stud. This is on a 7 16 rocker stud. So in theory, it would have um, more lift with the 7 16 rocker stud because some of the deflection is taken by the rocker stud. So this should be better. So it was supposed to be 468 lift. It's actually 475 when we measured. When I used the real spring, which is the same one here, the hydraulic roller, I only lost 9,000. It's not that much. When the solid roller spring was on, it lost 50 thousandths in lift. So quite a big loss. Now, so far, only thing I've really talked about is how much lift is lost. And it looks like a lot because part of this goes back to the last video. When I said you need more lift and you do need more lift because you, what you guys don't understand is you're not even getting the lift that's on the card. This card, what it says and what I actually have after it's said and done, I don't have. So for some people, they're thinking, I've got a 600 lift, don't need to have more because that's where the head stopped flowing. So let's assume even if that part's right, you don't have 600 lift. You have less through deflection. And it's worse. This is a hydraulic roller, which means it has zero lash, which means it should be this way. Let me show you this. This is the camshaft that's in my S10 right now, okay? This is the comp one. It's a very aggressive lobe, QRI on the intake. The exhaust one's pretty soft. If we look at it, it has a 459 lobe on intake. It's 252, 258, in case you're wondering. Now, why do I bring this up? Because watch this. 459 lobe, if you multiply it by my rocker ratio, which is 1.7 on the intake, I should have 780 lift. However, you forgot to take out the lash. The lash is 16 thousandths. So after lash, I have 0.766 lift. Okay? If I did the same thing here and I lost, say, 40 thousandths, really, I only have 0.736 lift. So at 780, it looks amazing. 0.736 doesn't look near as aggressive as that. That's a huge difference in lift. That's 50 thousandths, okay? Now, this just talks about lift. There's a major thing that I haven't even brought up because of this, all right? This right here, it's not even elementary. This is kindergarten cam stuff, okay? Um, if you want to go to a professional guy, the uh, top of the line, the, I would say college professor almost, talk to Tom at 3V about deflection. He has a Spintron, tests a whole bunch of stuff. He can give, give you way more stuff. But the most, one of the other things besides just lift, so forget about lift, the one bigger thing that happens is this. On your cam cards, when you have them, you have the intake opening points and closing points, the same, as, same with exhaust. When you have deflection, these points are going to change because this says at 50 thousandths lift, it should be at, I think it says, I'm looking at weird, negative three degrees or whatever, but it really won't matter. What I'm trying to say is whenever deflection happens, this point won't happen. So because of deflection, it's going to happen later because it's going to, everything takes up slack. The lifter takes up a little bit of slack. The push rods themselves, by the way, everyone that was tested here was a 5 16 080 wall. So pretty thin. Um, but normal for what a lot of people would use for hydraulic roller. Anyway, that's going to take up some slack. The rocker's going to take up some slaps. If you have rocker studs, they're going to take up some slack. Everything's going to take up some slack. And in that time, before it gets to 50 thousandths, more degrees of rotation has passed. And this number is actually different. So by the time it actually gets to 50 thousandths, it's not hit this point. Same with when it closes. It's not at that point. Same with the exhaust. This is theoretical what it should be. And when it's actually going, it's not. And when I bring up Tom, it's because Tom has a Spintron. And with the Spintron, he's able to plot the exact lobes as the engine's spinning up to the same RPMs and see when your valve's actually open and it's tracing the exact lift curve. Not theoretical, but the exact lift curve. So you can see what's happening. Because one thing is, and I kind of hinted at it, 
is these are max lifts here, which I said you lose some of the deflection. Some cams have something called loft. That's where the lifter will leave the um, lobe itself and hopefully comes back down on the right spot. If it leaves the lobe, that means it's going to have more lift than what the cam card says. Um, it'd be great if you could get one to loft and get uh, way more lift and then come down. The problem with um, loft is if it's not perfectly timed, you could damage a lot of stuff. This is how some of the guys with those low lift rules, like say 450 lift rules, um, can make more power than you would think possible because they're actually lofting the lifter. So it, in fact, they're getting more lift, but it's only for a short period of time. And they have to do a lot of stuff to make that happen without damaging stuff. Anyway, point I'm trying to make is these points change. So you could talk to your cam grinder, whoever else, and they spec you a cam and it's for best for what they think is gonna happen there, okay? However, if you've got deflection, which every engine has deflection, I don't care how good it is, it's gonna have some degree of deflection. How much or how little depends on how good the stuff is. Anyway, um, because of that, your points change. And what the guy, cam designer, or me, whoever, specs your camshaft, it's gonna be different than what you actually get. This is part of the reason why sometimes um, what I think will work, I'll add a few more degrees because I think it's gonna get def through deflection, it will get back to where the maybe two degrees more gets it back to where I wanted it to be. So anyway, that's some of it, um, and which is a big deal. Well, the next question you might be asking yourself is, well, how can I reduce this? Here's some things that help. Um, one, get the strongest, thickest push rod you could fit in the, in the engine. So if you could run, um, which small block Chevys is pretty tough, but let's say you could run a 3 8 push rod if you could fit it in there, um, if you got shaft rockers, usually you should be able to run a three eighths. Don't run a five sixteenths. Also run the thickest wall one you have. So these were measured with 080 wall. They make a 135 wall, I think, in a, a five sixteenths. It's either that or five or 105. Anyway, thickest wall possible, thickest push rod, fattest push rod you could find. And then also, if you can do steel rockers, because steel rockers won't deflect near as much as aluminum. When I was doing my testing for the 2014 engine masters, um, I was using Scorpion rockers and they had some insane amount of lifts um, with the actual, with the check spring. Like it was 537 and it should have been like 856 lift. When the real spring got on it, it lost quite a bit. So then I used comp and they have the ultra pro magnums and those didn't lose near as much. And when you had the check spring on, it didn't look near as impressive. But when the real spring was on, they actually had more actual lift than the Scorpions because of less deflection. So still rockers kind of helped that way. Anyway, this is probably a lot of information for somebody to digest. The point being is whatever lift you think you got, you don't have it. And these points that you have aren't happening in your engine at the same time. Now, by the way, I want to bring out one more thing. Really aggressive lobes, when you look at the catalog, seem great, right? So, for instance, this one's really aggressive when you look at it. The downside of having some of the aggressive lobes is you would think that the valve's going to open faster, and it should work that way. But sometimes lobes can be so aggressive that it causes more deflection and actually makes less power, not because it didn't have as much lift, um, but because it was so aggressive that the whole valve train itself is deflecting and it's either one, going to cause valve lo float later on, or two, you actually lost more lift through the more aggressive lobe than a softer lobe might have made, which I know this kind of might be confusing. Uh, what I'm trying to say is it sounds aggressive and should be opening the valve really fast, but instead it deflects more than when a softer lobe, which looks like it wouldn't open as fast, actually opens faster because it doesn't have as much deflection. Hopefully I make that sound somewhat, somewhat informative. That's hard to explain. Anyway, um, thanks for watching the video. Um, here's a preview for what's happening next because I want to show this because I'm so pumped. This ends with a cam discussion. I'm sure I'm going to get up a bazillion um, comments, which is fine. Do what you got to do. You make yourself feel better. But here we go. I've been dying for this one. This is going to be on Fridays. That's the headers for the S10. This is the collector. It's a merge collector. All right. These come from lemons. I got one kind of halfway in. I want to show you real quick. They're long tubes. Uh, I got a long way to go. I got to move a bunch of stuff. But anyway, that'll be a later video. You guys take care and enjoy your weekend.